Raider Nation, if you haven't subscribed to the number one Raider show on YouTube yet, what the heck are you waiting for? Let's get this bad boy to 109,000 subscribers. We only need 108 more. So what I want you to do is look underneath the video right there. Actually, hang on. I want you to look underneath the video, click that subscribe button, turn on those notifications. All right, man, let's get this thing going. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report and coming up here on today's show, we're going to get into some news and rumors. We're going to talk about Devontae Adams, Derek Carr. I got some juicy draft rumors and at the end of today's show, we're going to be getting into some extra stuff around free agency. Let's first though talk about Adams. I know he's not a member of the Raiders, but this does actually impact Las Vegas and their plans overall. The latest going on around the Packers star wide receiver is their general manager, Brian Gutekunst said that the Packers are unlikely to franchise tag Adams this offseason. Now, there's been a few different reports on how much money Adams has wanted, but Deanna Racine, she actually said today that Adams is apparently looking for $30 million a year. The franchise tag deadline is March 8th, 4 p.m. Eastern time. So, hypothetically, if the Packers wanted to tag him, they'd have to do it before then. If they are unable to do that, then he becomes a free agent and he's going to be on the Raiders' radar. So this is exactly what Brian Gutekun said, and yeah, you can get in a lot of trouble with that last name. We like to come uh, to a long-term deal that works for both sides, but again, that's hypothetical. A lot of things have to happen before we get to that point. We try to be respectful. I had a very good conversation with Tay before he left about all that stuff. And again, he's a unique player, unique person, and we'd certainly like to make him a long-term contract offer that works for both sides. So seeing that, it sound, does sound like the Packers want to make it happen. Here's the issue, though. They don't know what's exactly going to happen with Aaron Rodgers because there was a rumor that came out today that Rodgers apparently wants $50 million, and Green Bay doesn't have all that <laughs> much money. So here's my question, all right? Let's say the Packers, they don't tag him. Let's say they don't come to an agreement together, and Devontae Adams wants $30 million a year. You're the Las Vegas Raiders. You're Josh McDaniels. You're Dave Ziegler. I want you to let me know down in those comments, kind of right where you just clicked that sub button, and let me know why for yes and for no would you want Vegas to offer Adams $30 million a year. I love Devontae, right? I mean, you guys know that. If you follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, you know that I'm a big fan of Adams. He's the number one receiver in the National Football League. It's too much money for him. Now, if you want to give him $30 million on a one-year prove-it type of deal, I'm okay with that. And I don't want to hear the whole uh, DeAndre Hopkins conversation. Hopkins got a short contract. If Adams is willing to take a short deal, then $30 million is a little bit more realistic. If he wants five years, $30 million a year, it's crazy. I'm sorry. It's crazy. Now, I will say this. If I was going to pay him $30 million for this season and maybe even just two years, then I'd say Derek Carr has to play at 19.9. Remember all those stories out there. Derek and Tay want to play together. There was the report that Carr would be willing to take less money if it meant getting Devontae Adams. I'll pay Devontae Adams $30 million a year. But that means Derek Carr is making 19.9. That's personally where I sit from top to bottom. I love Tay. We'd love for him to be in silver and black. But it's a lot of money, man, for a wide receiver. Let's just say the Raiders don't want to go out and pay Devontae Adams $30 million a year. So what I figured I would do here is give some good value free agent wide receivers. My best bang for your buck. The first guy coming in here is going to be Michael Gallup, the six foot one, 205 pound receiver from the Dallas Cowboys. Since he's come out of Colorado State, I have been a huge, huge fan of him. Now, he kind of got bumped down the depth chart a little bit when they went out and they got Amari Cooper. You go out and draft C.D. Lamb. And Cedric Wilson, who's another free agent, is a, definitely a guy to keep in mind. Last season in nine games before he tore his ACL, 35 grabs, 445 yards, and two touchdowns. I think Michael Gallup would be a phenomenal fit with Derek Carr, but he's a wide receiver too, not a wide receiver one. Let's go to the next name on here. It's DJ Chark. This dude runs a 4.340. At least he did before his injury. Another guy coming off a season-ending injury. Played in only three games. And this past year had seven grabs, 154 yards, and two touchdowns. But he's six foot four, 210 pounds, and he can stretch the field. If I was DJ Chark and I was his agent, he's on the final year of his rookie deal. Right now, he's a free agent. 
I would say, where do you think you can go, take a one-year prove-it deal, and then make even more money the following offseason? If I was a team and I was an agent, I was a player, I'd, this might sound crazy, I would think about going to Derek Carr because Carr has been able to show if you can bring somebody in on that one-year prove-it deal, he can get you some money. Let's go to the next player coming up here. It's going to be Christian Kirk. And Kirk, I like a lot. He probably works best in the slot, but let's just say... Josh McDaniels wants to try to run the football more, which I definitely could see that happening. Some two tight end sets. Kirk, since he's come out of Texas A&M, definitely can work on the outside, can be a deep threat. Had 77 grabs for 982 yards, five touchdowns this past season. But Kirk also is not afraid to block. And sometimes I want some wide receivers that aren't afraid to block either. What's funny is all three of these players, I don't know if they would be the exact value of somebody like a Devontae Adams, but I do not see any one of these players really breaking the bank. I mean, would you rather have all three of these receivers for, let's say, $35 million or Devontae Adams for 30 It's definitely a question. But if you could only pick one to sign, would you go with Michael Gallup, type MG, DJ Chark, spin it up, DJ, or Christian Kirk, CK? Now we're going to talk about Derek Carr because I felt like, all right, if I'm going to start the show off with Devontae Adams, I got to go to D.C. Remember that old report from Ian Rappaport? Seems like, what, two weeks ago at this point? The Raiders are likely to extend Derek Carr. I've been sitting around picking my you-know-what, wondering when exactly is this going to happen. ESPN has projected about $40 million a year on a new contract for D.C., which then again would put him somewhere around, you know, $100 million three years when you add it to his 19.9. Here's what I'm starting to wonder. And I know it's kind of far-fetched, and I'm going to be 100% honest. It's a far-fetched idea. But if Derek Carr and Devontae Adams, they want to play together so freaking bad, could it actually be interesting to see if maybe the Raiders are waiting to see what the Green Bay Packers do with Devontae Adams and if they don't go ahead and franchise tag him? Then what if Carr is willing to take less money? Because if you go ahead and you extend DC right now, then it kind of takes all your playing chips away from Devontae. You wait to see what happens with Adams, then you go ahead and do what you got to do with Derek Carr. Now, let me make this point very clear. I want Derek Carr to be the Raiders quarterback in 2022. However, I want him at 19.9. For whatever reason, me saying that I want Derek Carr at 19.9 million as everyone on Twitter, Instagram saying, oh, this guy hates D.C., I don't hate D.C. I want to make the Raiders better, and I feel like Derek Carr playing at $19.9 million absolutely does that. Here's also why you don't extend Derek Carr right now. <laughs> you don't have to. He's got one year left on his deal. You already made him the highest-paid quarterback of all time. If D.C. wants to be a Raider and a Raider only, then I don't see the issue of paying at $19.9. I, I just do not get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. And 19.9 is a good value for Derek Carr's like overall ability. In fact, I think it actually be one of the better contracts because if you go out and you pay him $40 million a year, nobody actually thinks that Derek Carr is worth $40 million a year. Nobody does. And if you do, check your head. I think you bumped it while you were hitting that subscribe button. I love DC, and this is a good value. Here's my other reason. Why don't we wait to see if he fits in the McDaniels offense? Like, do I think that he's going to work out? Yes. Derek's worked with a lot of OCs, a lot of different head coaches. But what happens if this season, okay, he plays at 19.9, the Raiders go ahead and they extend him at $40 million a year. What happens if he doesn't do well in the offense? Now you're stuck paying Derek Carr, who just proved that he couldn't play in the offense, over $40 million a year. That's an issue to me. Wait to see if he plays well. If he plays well in it after 19.9, okay. I'm more willing then to go ahead and give Carr the money. Why? Because I know it would actually work. And then the last thing is this. The Raiders still have way too many needs at important positions. As it stands right now, and this is after you know the whole Henry Ruggs contract, after Damon Arnett, we're going to be sitting somewhere around $31.7 million. We have a major need at right tackle. We have a major need on the interior offensive line. We probably need two wide receivers. And on top of that, you need a linebacker, you need a cornerback, and you need a defensive tackle. That is a lot of major, major needs to sit here and say, no, we're going to extend our quarterback first. If Derek wants to win, the best way to do it is at playing at 19.9 and using that other money to go to the rest of the roster. Because I'm telling you right now, if I hear, oh, the Raiders don't have enough money to put good players around Derek Carr, I'm going to pull all of my hair out. Now, here's the last thing, y'all. I, I, again, I'm a very passionate person about this team, and I do not want you to get it twisted. I love D.C. He's a hell of a quarterback, good dude. But if you love the Raiders, 
And for whatever reason, the whole Derek Carr conversation splits the nation in half. And it kind of drives me absolutely up a wall. It should be about the shield. It should be about the silver and black. It should be about just win, baby. And if you feel that way, and if you're a diehard fan, then I want you to go ahead and subscribe to the Raiders Report. Click that sub button. Whether it's trades, off-season news and rumors, draft, free agency, I got you covered here. I promise you, you won't find another channel that does what we do. Let's get into the latest Raiders draft rumors thanks to an article from Bleacher Report titled Identifying Every NFL Team's Dream Draft Target in 2022. Apparently the dream draft target for the silver and black is wide receiver from Alabama, Jamison Williams. And before everyone goes, oh no, <laughs> I'm not taking another receiver from Alabama. I get it, Amari didn't work. Henry was trending in the right direction, but Henry decided to be a, be a dummy. And I get it. The Raiders need a wide receiver one. No doubt about it. And if there's anything I've been really good at saying for the past three years, Derek Carr, prove it year, Raiders need a wide receiver one. I mean, it's almost in my vocabulary. I say it when I'm sleeping at night. He is six foot two, 189 pounds, and he is a phenomenal, phenomenal talent. Had 75 catches, over 1,500 yards, 15 touchdowns. He's got speed. He's got acceleration. Good route runner. But here's my question to you. Is Jamison Williams the dream target for the Raiders? If you agree with that statement, I want you to type A for agree. If you're like, nah, man, I disagree with that statement, I want you to go ahead and type D for disagree. Personally, I am going to disagree with Bleacher Report, and it's not because I don't like Jamison Williams. If Jamison Williams didn't tear his ACL at, in the national championship game, then it's a different conversation. Why? Because I really, truly believe McDaniels needs to win right away. When you're 11 and 17 all time as a head coach, when you get so much crap for bailing on the old team, Josh McDaniels has to win. The Raiders won 10 games last year. The Raiders made the playoffs last year. If McDaniels comes in year one and doesn't win, people are going to point the finger at him, and they absolutely should. So why are you going to take a receiver that you do not know if he's going to be 100% or not come August? come the regular season. I know I wouldn't do it, and it's not because I don't like Williams, but there's other really talented receivers out there. Maybe like a Chris Olave. I don't know if Garrett Wilson's still on the board. Maybe Drake London's out there. Garrett Wilson, Jihad Dotson. If Jamison Williams was 100% healthy, honestly, oh, he might be my number one receiver. But I do not know. I'm not a doctor. And as it stands right now, you can't say that he's the dream guy. Jordan Davis, defensive tackle from Georgia? Yeah, sign me up. He'd be a perfect fit in our new Patrick Graham defense. Sauce Gardner? I'll take extra sauce, and if I got to pay extra for avocado, I'll do that too. Trevor Penning, this dude's an absolute mauler on the right side of the offensive line. These would be your dream targets for the Las Vegas Raiders, not Jamison Williams. And it's not because I don't like Jamison. It's because Josh McDaniels needs to win right away. So now here's your opportunity, y'all. Who is the Raiders' dream draft target? You're laying in bed. You know that old meme that's like your girlfriend thinks you're thinking about somebody else and you're actually just laying in bed thinking about your draft target? That's what I want. Who is that person? Let me know down in the comments. The next topic that we're going to be breaking down here, it's going to be the final one on the Raiders report. It's around Zay Jones. And Fansided released an article that said that the Raiders should look to bring back Zay next year. I get it. This guy is coming off a career year, and I remember I did some, actually one of the very first fantasy football articles, I know you guys probably don't care, I did was about Zay Jones because he had like 157 catches coming out of East Carolina. Dude was an absolute stud. In fact, I believe it was like Mike Mayock's like favorite uh, wide receiver coming out. Here's the issue, though. PFF is projecting, and Spotrack's kind of around this number as well, three years, $18 million. So an average of, drumroll please, math, $6 million a year for Zay Jones. He's a good route runner, a good player, offers a lot of stuff for the Raiders in terms of being that glue guy in the locker room. Last season, 47 grabs, 546 yards, and a touchdown. The issue is this. When the Raiders were at their best, they didn't really use Zay Jones. And uh, Mitch, but he caught the touchdown to beat the Ravens. You're right. You're 100% right. But when the Raiders were churning, Zay Jones was not used. He was used because he had to be used. Brian Edwards couldn't step up. Henry Ruggs obviously went away. Darren Waller got injured. Zay was used in that pinch. So get your votes in. Should the Raiders re-sign Zay Jones? I want you to type R for re-sign or W for let him walk. I'm going to say that you should sign him, but $3 million is the max. 
Zay Jones was making $1.1 million going in to 2021, and John Gruden was like, for whatever reason, you know what, Zay? We're going to give you a pay raise. We're going to give you $2.5 million this year. So if I was Zay Jones, I'd be like, all right, I got a pay raise last season for, I'm sorry, not really doing anything. I'm okay taking $3 million. If Zay wants to make four, five, six, seven, let him go somewhere else. It's kind of like what we had to deal with with Nelson Aguilar. And guess what? That ended up working out. If Zay wants to come play for $3 million a year, I'm okay with it. If he doesn't, well, then guess what? No ZJs for Raider Nation.